Greetings, Bell Road Baptist Church family and friends of our church who may be watching this. Uh, this is Wednesday evening, uh, April 15th, 2020, and we are missing our church family and our prayer meeting that we have on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock at Bell Road Baptist Church. So we wanted to have a bit of a devotional tonight to guide us in our thoughts and uh, maybe pray together. There are a lot of requests that have come in, but because this is on an open channel, we won't share those personal requests or names. But we have been calling you and praying with you and trying to minister to you. Tonight, I wanted to use uh, as our theme Psalm 6. Psalm 6. I'd like to ask you to turn to that in your Bibles. And I've chosen this because it's a prayer of David for healing. And I want to look at that in, in the sense of personal healing that we might need. Some of you are struggling with your own illnesses. We want to pray for healing for those that we know of who are suffering from this virus. We want to pray for our nation's healing. And we want to pray for the world's healing from this global pandemic. So let's look at Psalm 6 this evening together. Uh, this is for the director of music with stringed instruments. A uh, Psalm of David, verse 1, O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am faint. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in anguish. How long, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. No one remembers you when he is dead. Who praises you from the grave? I am worn out from groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be ashamed and dismayed. Then they will turn back in sudden disgrace. Isn't that beautiful? Heavenly Father, we ask your Holy Spirit in these next few moments to teach us from your word. We believe that your word is true and righteous and holy. We ask your Holy Spirit to minister to us as we look through this prayer of David for healing and teach us and inspire us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning I looked on the CDC website, cdc.gov, the Centers for Disease Control, for an update on the coronavirus. And the numbers are overwhelming. So far, as of today, uh, there are 579,000 cases of the virus that have been reported here in the United States. Of those, there have been 22,200 deaths. 22,200 deaths. And as some of you are aware, no public funerals are allowed. No family gatherings uh, to bury these people. Um, in Tennessee, we have 5,800 cases. 5,800 cases of the virus, and so far we've had 124 deaths. 124 deaths. Just this past Monday, our governor, April 13th, Governor Bill Lee, extended his stay-at-home order now, mandating non-essential businesses to remain closed until April 30th. So we are right in the middle of this pandemic. And that's why I believe that this Psalm 6 is going to minister to us this evening in our prayer meeting through the power and strength of the Holy Spirit. First, I want you to look at David's situation and our situation. In verses 1 to 3, he says, Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not rebuke me in your anger. I've sensed a feeling from many people that God has turned his back on America, that God is angry with America, that he's punishing America and the world for sin through this pandemic. I do not believe that. I believe that God is angry with sin, but he loves people. He wants all people everywhere to come to faith in Jesus Christ. And so even though we may sense that God has turned his back or that God is angry with us, I want to assure you that he does not feel that way. Psalm 30 is an important verse. Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Can you sense that hope and joy and praise of the Lord, even during this difficult 
time. Verse 2 quickly moves to God's mercy and healing. Verse 2, have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. Maybe you're feeling that way this evening as you watch this. Maybe you're feeling faint and tired of this. Um, I work in a, in a grocery store, and so many people have come through, and they just they say, I'm tired of all this. They're tired of having their children at home all day. They're tired of cooking three meals a day, or working from home, or not being able to be with their friends. And we feel, at this time, faint. And we may have weeks more of this uh, staying at home. 1 Peter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter 2, verse 9. You're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession to proclaim the virtues of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you're the people of God. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Friends, we are priests of our Heavenly Father, and the message that we need to be sharing right now on Facebook and all of these opportunities and phone calls is not one of God's judgment, God's anger, fear, and worry, upset. We need to be sharing about God's mercy. We need to be celebrating Him because we're a chosen people, the royal priesthood. And then verse 2, the second part, Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. Are you feeling even the agony of all of this, the, the deepness of it? I want to refer to Acts chapter 4, the believer's prayer, when the church went under tremendous persecution and they began to gather. In verse 29, they prayed, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with complete boldness as you stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And after they had prayed, the place was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Let that be our prayer tonight, that instead of complaining and being afraid and sharing concerns, that we can pray and ask the Holy Spirit to speak boldly through us as he heals our land. Now, in uh, verses 6 and 7, I'm worn out from my groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Are you worn out? Are you worn out from this whole situation, ready to get back to work, ready to get back to your family? In 2 Thessalonians, Paul wrote and requested prayer. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2, he requested prayer from the church. He said, Pray that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, for not everyone holds to the faith. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do what we command. Are you praying that prayer? Are you praying with confidence in the Lord and what he wants to do? So our situation seems very dire. It seems very dark and maybe even hopeless to you as we look to the weeks ahead. But I want you to look at David's prayer. And this is going to be our prayer this evening. Verses 4 and 5. This is Psalm 6, verse 4 and 5. Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Among the dead, no one proclaims your name. Who praises you from the grave? Turn, Lord. I uh, remember John chapter 16 when Jesus was trying to console his disciples as he told them that he was going to leave them. He was going to be crucified, uh, buried. He was going to raise on the third day and then return to heaven. And he prayed for them that their grief in him leaving would turn to joy. This is John 16 verse 19. Aware that they wanted to question him, Jesus said to his disciples, are you asking one another why I said, in a little while you will not see me, and then after a little while you will see me? Truly, truly, I tell you, you will weep and wail while the world rejoices. You will grieve, now listen, but your grief will turn to joy. Jesus promised us as his disciples that these periods of grief and loneliness would turn to joy as we keep our eyes on him. And uh, David prayed, deliver me. 
He said, deliver me, Lord, from this illness, this weakness. And I remember 2 Corinthians chapter 1 is the great chapter of God, the God of all comfort. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We're comforted so that we can comfort others. But in verse 9, Paul wrote, indeed, we felt we were under the sentence of death. We feel that way. Every time we go out, every time we meet someone, we're afraid that we might catch a virus that could kill us. We feel like we're under a sentence of death in order that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Don't be afraid of this virus. God is able to raise us from the dead. He has delivered us from such deadly peril. He will deliver us. In Him, we have placed our hope that he will yet again deliver us. As you help us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the favor shown us in answer to our prayers. And then that verse 4, Save me, Father, save me from this time, this period, because of your unfailing love. We don't ask for special blessings because we're so good, we're so wonderful, we're special. We pray for healing for our land, for healing for ourselves, and freedom from this virus because of His unfailing love. We've put our trust in that. Psalm 33, we'll come to that uh, one of these weeks. Verse 4, For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all He does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of His unfailing love. You've heard, you've heard that the world is full of a pandemic. That millions of people, I think now 20 million people, have this virus. But actually the earth is full of God's unfailing love. And finally, the answer from the Lord, verses 8 and 10. This is uh, Psalm 6, verses 8 to 10. The Lord answers David, Away from me, all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. I remember Isaiah 30, The people of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. How gracious he will be when you cry for help. As soon as he hears, he will answer you. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. Be encouraged tonight. Don't be afraid. Uh, read Psalm 6 this evening. Read it tomorrow morning uh, for your quiet time. And pray those prayers of deliverance and mercy. And hear God say he's heard our prayers. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this time in our lives. We know that you're teaching each one of us something very special. We say, Father, the Lord has heard my weeping. Thank you. And Lord, you've heard our cries for mercy. Father, accept our prayers for healing, uh, for our, our families, for those who are sick with this virus, for our nation, and for our world. We pray for your healing, and we believe in your healing. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and we'll see you Sunday morning, the Lord willing.